Thank you. Beautiful. Good morning, and welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of San Miguel de Allende. We are grateful to be here together, making community, whether in person here at the Aldea or via Zoom. My name is Kathy Canapa. I'm a co-chair of our Sunday Services Committee, and I will be our service leader today. You use welcome all seeking a compassionate community to walk with to the future on our search for truth and meaning, both individually and as part of the interconnected web of existence. We strive to build beloved community and believe that, in the words of Cornell West, justice is what love looks like in public. We like to say, come as you are. We hope you don't leave that way. <laughs> I am so excited to have with us today Reverend Rita Capizzi, although it's via Zoom. Many of us enjoyed visiting with her during the week that Rev. Tanya Marquez was with us in the spring. Rita Capizzi is a native of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and for 25 years, she lived and raised a family in Buffalo, New York. While working as an English professor at a Jesuit college, she enjoyed traveling to Europe, southern India, and Tanzania with students and colleagues. She entered Meadville Lombard Theological School in 2015. And since granted fellowship by the UUA, Rev. Rita has served as the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Mankato, Minnesota as its first full-time settled minister. We are honored to have Rita as our guest minister today, talking about intentional futures. Now, some brief announcements. After the service, those on Zoom are invited to stay connected and visit with each other and have discussion with Reverend Capizzi. And those who are with us here in the Aldea, please go downstairs and visit together for coffee hour, for coffee and cookies. Um, now, if we have any visitors here today, would you please stand so that we can see who you are and greet you personally afterwards. Oh, how wonderful. Okay. Um, wait, stand. Wait, wait, we're slow. We'd like to see who you are so that we can greet you. And can you just tell me your name and where you're from? I'm Kimberly Edwards from Boston, and I am here visiting my father, Mr. Rand. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let's go straight to the next daughter. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. I'm Mary Alice Morrison from Fairhope, Alabama, and this is my daughter, Sarah. Welcome, both of you. Me? Yep. Yeah. Uh, my name is Maria Farmer. I actually live here and have lived in Mexico for about 14 years. I used to come here all the time, uh, maybe eight years ago, nine years ago, and then different things, of course, happened, including our little bit quarantine. <laughs> um, but I, I Wonderful. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you. I'm Sandra, and I've been in San Miguel for five years, and originally from Berkeley, California. Welcome. I'm Susan Bridgeport. I'm a member of the First Unitarian Church in Des Moines, Iowa. Great. Glad you're here. Welcome, bienvenidos. <laughs> Thank you all. And please greet our guests later. And if you are visiting via Zoom, 
would you please type your name and where you're from into the chat box so that after the service, we can also greet you personally online. Um, finally, please check the order of service or our website, uufsma.org, to see the various events and many small groups sponsored by this fellowship and information on how to become a member. You can find previous services on our YouTube channel, which you can access from the website or by going to youtube.com and just typing in UUFSMA. Now, let's begin our worship service by joining our voices together in song for hymn number 298, Wake Now My Senses. It, in your gray hymnal and it will appear on the screen and after it we will go directly to welcome Reverend Rita Capizzi for opening words. These words by the Reverend Eric Walker Wickstrom, the purpose of this community is to help its people grow. If you are who you were, and if the person next to you is who they were, if none of us has changed since the day we came in here, we have failed. The purpose of this community, of any church, temple, zendo, mosque, is to help its people grow. We do this through encounters with the unknown in ourselves, in one another, in the other, whoever that might be for us, however hard that might be, because these encounters have many gifts to offer. So may you transform and then go forth from here this morning, not who you were, but who you could be. So may we all. And now we move more deeply into a time of worship by lighting our chalices wherever you are. And with these words by the Reverend Jennifer Grayson, connected through the web of life. We light this chalice, symbol of our purpose to bring more light and justice into the world. We light our chalices knowing our, commun our congregation as a church dispersed across communities, not bound by walls, but connected through the web of life. Encendemos este cáliz como símbolo de nuestro propósito para traer más amor y justicia en el mundo. Encendemos este cáliz reconociendo a nuestra congregación 
como una iglesia a lo largo de las comunidades, no delimitada por muros, sino conectada a través de la red de la vida. And now I invite you all to join in reciting this fellowship's unique covenant, first in English and then with Diana Amaya leading us in Spanish. We respect the interdependent web of life and work for a just and peaceful world. We encourage the search for truth and meaning, strive for compassion in our relationships, and seek values that will benefit our lives and the lives of others. This is our covenant. Respetamos todos los estilos de vida dentro de su red interdependiente y trabajamos por un mundo justo y pacífico. Alentamos la búsqueda de la verdad y la comprensión total. Nos esforzamos por mantener compasión en nuestras relaciones y buscamos valores que beneficien nuestras vidas y las vidas de los demás. Este es nuestro convenio. And we go to Mark Johannes Meyer via Zoom for joys and concerns. Good morning. As Kathy just said, I am Mark Johannes Meyer. I'm a member of this congregation, and uh, and I have often been asked to share in the joys and concerns. This week, there were several emails that came in to Tom Rossiello, our minister. And so we'll be sharing those in just a moment. For next week, if you have a joy or concern, I hope that you will do the same. Email it in to uh, Reverend Tom. And that holds for any of the, the upcoming Sunday services. And if you have a concern today, you may type that into the chat box. And uh, that way, those in our fellowship will be able to see those and share in those joys and concerns. Now some words from Anne Hillman, words that invite us to go deeper and invite us to connect. We are all on a journey together to the center of the universe. So look deep into yourself, into another, it is to a center which is everywhere. That is the holy journey. First, you need only look, notice, and honor the radiance of everything about you. Play in this universe. Tend all those shining things around you, the smallest plant, the creatures, and the objects in your care. Be, be gentle, nurture, and listen. As we experience and accept all that we really are, we grow in our ability to care. We begin to embrace others as ourselves and learn to live 
as one among the many. Today, we light a candle for each of the joys and concerns. We light this first candle as we send healing thoughts and a hope for quick recovery to Jesus Castillo, who had surgery to repair hernias this week. He's doing well, and Hugh is taking good care of him. And now a candle of gratitude and hope for Elisa Gonzalez. If she continues to recuperate from her surgery, she's at home with family. And as she reported last week, she is doing all her exercises. Elisa would love to hear from you by email. Her email is Elisa M G M E L I S A M G M underline and then Elisa M G M at Yahoo. This candle is for Else Marie Norby, who continues to do well at Sophie's place in Los Frailes. She would love visits from other UUs. A candle of gratitude for the gift of rain, which is bringing new life and growth to our land. A candle of concern and care for those who have contracted COVID and for those who are caring for them. A candle of solidarity for the people of Ukraine especially all who have lost homes, livelihoods, relatives, friends, and a candle of concern for Russian soldiers serving in the invasion of Ukraine who are caught between their moral sense of right and wrong and orders to continue the unprovoked attacks on the civilian population. And now a candle for the joys and concerns of all those participating in this service, which are deeply felt, but have not been given voice during this time of public communal sharing. We rejoice with you. We share your sorrows your hopes, your fears, your delights. And we offer this time of silence when your minds and hearts can embrace those of your neighbors. May it be so. I invite you now into a time of prayer, reflection, and meditation. Settle into your mind and your body as it is in this moment. Close your eyes or simply soften your gaze. Bring gentle awareness to those parts of you that hurt. Follow your breath knowing you are not alone in your pain, no matter its nature. We breathe together into this time of witness and compassion. Open your heart to the spirit of connection. The words of Reverend Lynn Cox, prayer of co-creation. Creative spirit, source of life and love. We give thanks for the beauty of this day and for the company of all those assembled. Thank you for the breezes of change, clearing our heads and bringing fresh ideas. May they cleanse our minds 
of the oppressions and the isms that divide us. Thank you for the flame of hope, the heat of righteous anger, the warmth of compassion, the fire of commitment. May they bubble the cauldrons of transformation. Thank you for oceans of love, rivers of connection, tears of relief, and pools of serenity. May healing waters flow over us and through us and among us, wearing down the sharp rocks of despair to bring joy in the morning, in this morning. Thank you for the good earth beneath us, around us, and within us. May we take this clay and co-create a new realm of beauty and justice. Thank you for all these and more. We accept our gifts and commit to building, sculpting, painting, singing, and dancing them to life, to abundant life. May it be so. Blessed be and amen. Let us share a stillness as we listen to the music together. Thank you, Mauro. Good morning. My name is Robin Loving, and like you, I do my best to create an intentionally wonderful future for myself and my community. To help us keep our sense of future intentionality, feel the deep power of giving to those futures, and be intentional for your reasons for giving, your compassion for your neighbor, your conscientiousness to justice for all, your vision to work for a planet transformed by our care. To create an intentional future is to build a new way. Start with love so that we, as a community, may foster transformation, ever drawing on the deep wells of kindness and open-heartedness. Whether you give through our weekly offerings, through our annual pledges, and there are envelopes now in the baskets in case you're pledging by the week and you want to write your name on the envelope and put your pledge in it, or through the website uufsma.org when the spirit moves you. Thank you in advance for your generosity. The offering will now be collected and most gratefully received. And by the way, during the accompanying music, the lyrics will be both in the printed order of service here today as well as in the Zoom chat box.
This is an excerpt from The Overstory, a novel by Richard Powers. Darkness settles in. Mission Dolores Park's inhabitants change. But even these night visitors cut a path around Mimi. She leans forward, hands in her lap like two tender figs, bows her head, weighed down by liberty, dozes and wakes many times. Mimi leans back against the pine's trunk. Some slight change in the atmosphere, the humidity, and her mind becomes a greener thing. At midnight, on this hillside, perched in the dark above the city, with her pine standing in for a bow, Mimi gets enlightened. The fear of suffering that is her birthright, the frantic need to steer, blows away on the wind and something else wings down to replace it. Messages hum from out of the bark she leans against. Chemical semaphores home in over the air and currents rise from the soil gripping roots, relayed over great distances through fungal synapses linked up in a network the size of the planet. The signals say, a good answer is worth reinventing from scratch again and again. They say, the air is a mix we must keep making. They say, there is as much below ground as above. They tell her, do not hope or despair or predict or be caught by surprise. Never capitulate, but divide, multiply, transform, conjoin, and endure as you have all the long day of life. A thing can travel everywhere just by holding still. She hears and sees this by direct gathering through her limbs. The fires will come, despite all efforts, the blight and wind throw and floods. Then the earth will become another thing and people will learn it all over again. Second growth will rush back in, supple, loud, and testing all possibilities. Webs of forests will swell with species shot through in shadow and dappled by new design. Each streak of color on the carpeted earth will rebuild its pollinators. Fish will surge again up all the watersheds, stacking themselves as thick as cordwood through the rivers, thousands per mile. Once the real world ends, The next day dawns, people drift back through the park on their way to jobs, appointments, and other urgencies, making a living. Some pass within a few feet of the altered woman. Mimi comes to and speaks her very first Buddha's words. I'm hungry. The answer comes back from right above her head. Be hungry. I'm thirsty. Be thirsty. I hurt. Be still and feel. I'm so grateful to be with you all today. And 
I thank you for your generosity in having me. And a special thanks to everyone who makes Sunday morning worshipful, especially today, Kathy and Diego and Diana and Maro and Paula and Robin and Miguel and Mark and all the Zoom hosts and greeters and hospitality providers, I don't know. My words today are not possible without you. As Unitarian Universalists, one of the things we share is an understanding that we are, each of us and collectively, on a journey, even on many journeys. We are called to seek. We are called to look deeply into ourselves, to discover and name our most profound values, our essential being. We are called to discover. We are called to listen to our inner voices, which tell us who we truly can be in this world of woe and beauty. Seeking, discovering, listening, we set a course to explore what is fundamental within us, a fundament that connects us to all the fundament, the groundwork of reality, for we too are reality. Becoming a transformative part of reality looks like continuously moving from one thing to another, from one belief about the holy to another, from less justice to more justice, from limited truth toward ever expansive truth, from isolation toward a sense of our place in this vast reality. And we are moving through our own lives at the same time that we are moving through the cultural lives of our times. And as we move, we might pause too, this morning even, to ask, what does a recognition of the journey, when does a recognition of the journey become an intention to transformation? We are meant to be changed by our journeys together in our larger communities and in this community. If none of us has changed since the day we came here, we have failed. When does a recognition of the journey become an intention to transformation? And how exactly do we transform? For 50 years, I have loved that song by America, Ventura Highway. Some of you gringos might know it too. Maybe it was a blast from the past for some of you. It helped to shape my preteen sense of adventure and journey. It evoked freedom for me and called me to imagine myself different from what I was living within. But I confess that even back then, the one line always perplexed me, at times annoyed me. Alligator lizards in the air. What? Are they high? Are they channeling the prehistory of the region, imagining pterodactyls, but confusing the biology? Are they writers of beautiful musical tunes and instrumentations, but not very good poets? Flying lizards, really? Maybe. In light of transformation, I've begun to understand the silly lyric in new ways. But before we get to alligator lizards, let's think about a more familiar metaphor of transformation, the caterpillar transforming into a butterfly from a fat and wormy existence anchored to stalks and leaves to a hibernation in a chrysalis hanging from a fragile branch to colorful wings and the freedom of flight. We see the beginning and the end point of this journey, the caterpillar and the butterfly, both recognizable insects in our gardens. It's in the chrysalis, though, that the fundamental and yet amazing transformation happens. Within the chrysalis, that's where the transformation is hidden from view, but all the more necessary. And it's a good thing it's hidden from view because transformation is messy and unsightly. Within the chrysalis, the structure of the caterpillar dissolves into a soupy organic mush. Within this 
dissolution, the imaginal cells, which have lain dormant within the caterpillar, these cells become activated and begin to create the new structure of the butterfly. The imaginal cells do this specific work, even though there is no similarity whatsoever between the two creatures. It's remarkable. One creature becomes a completely different one a bit more like alligator lizards in the air than I might have initially thought. Unexpected and changed, one thing becomes quite something else. Now, alligator lizards do not have an internal predisposition to become flying creatures, no imaginal cells there to trigger and sustain an intentional future mode of existence. Alligator lizards will not become, at least not in their own lifetimes, capable of flight. They seem like a fantasy, something impossible. But on second thought, perhaps alligator lizards are an aspiration, a wish to which you purpose, drawing on something else, something outside yourself to help to bring about the transformation. What kind of thing or thinking could emerge? What could encourage such, such inspiration to become aspiration, to become purpose and intention for a future not yet unfolding, but ready to? In Richard Power's novel, The Overstory, all the characters undergo transformation, each discovering in their own ways what it means to be themselves, the selves they wish to become. Each in their own way finds what it means to be human, and each becomes themselves in relationship with other beings, finding what it means to be part of the interconnected relationship of Earth, of the interdependent web of all existence. The plot is complex, a sign of the complexity of forests. In Plant Biology, Overstory describes the uppermost canopy of the sheltering tops of the trees. In the novel, Overstory is what holds all the threads of the narrative together. All the transformations within the story happen because of, because of the characters' intentions and their relationships with trees and with other human beings who find relationship with trees. It's a powerful tale of longing to save the earth in this time of climate crisis. It's a story of learning that exactly what we need to save both our human selves and the planet is a transformed relationship to reality. And Mimi is just one example. The transformation of the character Mimi mir mirrors that of the mythic first enlightened human, Siddhartha, whom we know as the Buddha. Siddhartha was a, pre, a prince whose father had sheltered him from the realities of life. He did not know that sickness and death are an inevitable part of our human story. And once Siddhartha is exposed to these realities, he goes on a journey to understand why human misery is pervasive and even normal. After six years of meditation and austerity, Siddhartha still doesn't know. And then he spends 49 days under a tree, a fig tree, what becomes known as the bow or bodhi tree. In one accounting, it is in thanking the tree for providing him shade that Siddhartha becomes the Buddha, understanding the nature of human existence. Enlightenment comes of communication with a tree of gratitude for a tree, of understanding their inner relationship, primed by his journey into himself. In the novel, Powers explores through the character Mimi what this communication between tree and human might look like and what implications it might have for transformation in all of us. Mimi reaches a point of crisis in her life where uncertainty and regret fill her spirit. She finds herself in Mission Dolores Park. Not an accident. Dolores means full of sorrow, full of sadness. 
Mimi sits down to rest under a tree and finds she does not want to move. She sits all night. As she leans back against the pine's trunk, something changes slightly in the atmosphere, the humidity, and her mind becomes a greener thing. Mimi senses how she and the tree are light. Slowly, all through the night, Mimi reaches enlightenment. The fear of suffering that is her birthright, the frantic need to steer, flows away on the wind and something else wings down to replace it. It is not the suffering and uncertainty that disappear, our human birthright. It is instead Mimi's response to that, her need to fear and to control. I understand Mimi's response. It is like my own, maybe like yours. But now Mimi is tuned into something beyond herself, even as she is more herself than she has ever been. Messages hum from out of the bark she leans against. Chemical semaphores home in over the air. Currents rise from the soil gripping roots relayed over great distances through fungal synapses linked up in a network the size of the planet. And she is enmeshed there. Under the pine tree, Mimi is tapping into the reality that is both within her and outside her. Science has shown that plants communicate with each other underground and in the air. Perhaps if we reach that place within ourselves, which can listen and hear, perhaps if we can transform ourselves so we are tuned into the deepest parts of ourselves, we can be tuned as well to that larger communication underground and through the air. And thus, we might reach even greater transformation. Mimi hears the signals among the plants say, there is as much below ground as above. She hears them say, do not hope or despair or predict or be caught by surprise. And she hears a thing can travel anywhere just by holding still. She hears and sees this by direct gathering through her limbs, not just through her ears. As Mimi begins to intuit reality in ways less like humans and more like trees, her transformation evolves from recognition of her part in the all of the universe to recognition of how little she knows and how little she controls. Mimi receives messages about what will happen in the climate crisis that is and which will be. The fires will come despite all efforts, the blight and wind throws and floods. Then the earth will become another thing and people will learn it all over again. Second growth will rush back in supple, loud ways, testing all possibilities. Webs of forest will swell with species shot through in shadow and dappled by new design. Each streak of color on the carpeted earth will, re will rebuild its pollinators. Mimi intuits in her greener way, in her transformed connection, that another world will be born once the real world ends. Once the real world ends, the real world, a false world so real to most of us, dominated by human desire and need, separated from the bonds joining the whole of nature as if we were not part of nature. In Mimi's transformed state, she is led to conceive her human self in a new way, a way that is awake to the now, without longing for a past which is over or attachment to a future that is not born. Mimi comes to and speaks her first Buddha's words, I'm hungry. The answer comes right back from above her head. Be hungry. I'm thirsty. 
Be thirsty. I hurt. Be still and feel. The aspiration embedded here is that if Mimi can be present in this way to herself, she has also a transformed relationship with reality and all the humans and beings, her companions here. And Mimi is ready to set a new future for herself, an intentional future that acknowledges her birthright of suffering and knows that there is more to reality than that. It's a good story. It's a powerful story. It's a story calling us to aspire to that deep dive into ourselves, to become our more completely realized selves. A call to learn of ourselves as part of the all, not as isolated and individuated beings. It is within all of us to transform into people who can reach for a higher purpose, motivated by connection and community. All we need is a bit of inspiration to bring us to such an aspiration. Caterpillars to butterflies, flying alligators, a night under a tree. Each of us is on our own individual journeys, making a start, making a difference, creating possibilities for sharing, for communicating, for caring, and on our own journeys, we come together, each one a drop that makes a ripple that can, rise the, that can raise the tide, transforming ourselves so we can change what needs to be changed in our religious community and in the larger world. And it is in being in the company of others that we are inspired to go to our own abilities to transform. This religious community is a place where you hear this call and take this risk to transformation. For as much as we take these journeys individually, it is in community that we can do it without loneliness and fear, with a chance to reflect and discuss and go deeper and learn more. Within the chrysalis, as the caterpillar becomes the butterfly, initially each imaginal cell operates like a single-celled organism doing its job independently. And initially, the immune system of the caterpillar that still exists inside the chrysalis treats the newly awake imaginal cells as threats and attacks them. Transformation is resisted. Maybe that sounds familiar to you. But the imaginal cells continue their work of transformation. They multiply and they begin to connect to each other, forming clusters. They start to resonate with the same frequency and communicate in the same language, passing information back and forth until there is a tipping point. Then the imaginal cells stop acting as individual separate cells, the clusters grow, single cells become a new multi-celled organism. Then the butterfly comes into being, ripening for its emergence. There is anything the pandemic has taught us. It has marked us with uncertainty, forced us to confront insecurity and tenuous futures. We know not what the future will bring, what should be considered. It's hard to plan. And that has always been true. We never know how reality will unfold, even when we act like we do. The pandemic times has, have, pandemic times have ripped away the illusion of control. And that is deeply uncomfortable, even terrifying. And yet, each of us making a start, making a difference, creating possibilities for sharing, for communicating, for caring, for relationship. And on our own journeys, we come together, each one a drop that makes a ripple that can raise the tide, transforming ourselves so we can change what needs to be changed in our world. And it is being in the community of others that inspires our own ability to change. I hope that you will join me now in singing a song that might be unfamiliar, but is uh, called 
we are building a new way. It's in our teal hymnal, if you have one, number 1017, and the words will be on the screen. En un espíritu de creatividad y generatividad que nosotros como comunidad religiosa fomentamos la transformación, moviéndose siempre en un viaje hacia el amor y la vida. En un espíritu de creatividad y generatividad. May we, as a religious community, foster transformation, ever moving on a journey to love and life. Aprovechando nuestros profundos pozos de bondad y amor, para que podamos avanzar juntos, para desgastar el filo de las rocas de la desesperación y traer alegría en esta mañana y en todas nuestras mañanas. Drawing on our deep wells of kindness and open-heartedness, may we move together to wear down the sharp rocks of despair and bring joy in this morning and in all mornings. Que nos comprometamos dentro de nosotros mismos y en conjunto con los demás, a una vida próspera, brillante y abundante. May we commit within ourselves and in relationship with each other to thriving, lively, abundant life. Mientras recuerdas hoy y todos los días, 
que eres amado, tú eres digno, eres bienvenido y eres necesario. Que lo sientas así, que así sea y que el pueblo diga amén. As you remember today and every day that you are loved, you are worthy, you are welcome and you are needed. May you feel it so. May it be so. And may we say together, amen. <laughs>